Before we begin, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. Neighbor caught crawling around an attic after couple hear creepy noises at night. What would you do if you shelled out over a million dollars for a new house, only to discover it made your life into a nightmare? It happened to the Broadus family when Derek and Maria Broadus finally closed on a beautiful house in the ritzy town of Westfield, New Jersey. They couldn't wait to move in. Their three kids were excited and they were elated to land a dream home. However, before they even moved in, a sinister letter had them questioning their purchase. A Supposed Dream Home While this home, located at 657 Boulevard in Westfield, New Jersey, might look like a gorgeous place to live, the events that took place over the course of two years might change your mind. In June 2014, Derek Brodus, who just closed on the home with his wife Maria, went to check the mail after he finished a huge paint job on the building's interior. Having closed just three days prior, there wasn't much mail to receive except a few bills. However, there was also a white envelope that looked completely out of place. It was addressed to the new owner. Derek naturally assumed it was a letter welcoming the family to the neighborhood. As he read it, however, he realized something more sinister was at play. The letter read, I have been put in charge of watching and waiting for its second coming. Why are you here? I will find out. Derek's excitement about his new home immediately dissolved and anxiety took its place. There was no return address on the envelope. The letter continued with more terrifying words. You have children. I've seen them. So far, I think there are at least three that I've counted. It was signed, The Watcher. Because the watcher said, I asked the woods to bring me young blood, and it looks like they listened, Derek and Maria wrote a letter to the previous owners, John and Andrea Woods, inquiring about the cryptic message. Interestingly enough, Andrea Woods did admit to receiving one letter at the start of their stay, but nothing else over the 23 years they remained there. Nevertheless, Derek and Maria were officially freaked out and second-guessing the purchase. Two weeks later, Maria found another note in the mailbox. All of the windows and doors in 657 Boulevard allow me to watch you and track you as you move through the house. Happy moving in day. I'll be watching. The Brodises immediately took the letters to the police. They were terrified for their safety at this point. The case fell into the hands of Westfield's police chief, David Wayman. Unfortunately, the letters themselves didn't really offer anything substantial. Reminded of the movie The Watcher with Keanu Reeves, the family also turned to private investigators and former FBI agents to help. However, after thorough research, no one could pinpoint a culprit. Even though some of the renovations in the Brodus's new home were alarms, the family's anxiety was through the roof. Occasionally, an alarm would sound and Derek would go to the house armed with a knife. Even so, the watcher's letters continued. I am in charge of 657 Boulevard. It is not in charge of me, another letter read. I will be patient and wait for this to pass and for you to bring the young blood back to me. This was insane. The Brodises already sold their previous home, so Maria's parents invited them to stay in their place. There was one night when police, on a stakeout, saw a suspicious vehicle park in front of the home, but nothing came of the incident. The family didn't want to draw much attention to their problem, but a local reporter eventually got wind of the events, and soon everyone in the country knew what was happening. People all over had their own theories about the letters. Some believe the family wrote the letters themselves to get out of a deal they couldn't afford, while others assumed it was someone with a sick sense of humor playing a joke. Derek and Maria, of course, knew it was worse. Nothing violent ever actually occurred to the Brodus family, but two more letters were received during the two-and-a-half-year period. Derek, Maria, and the kids never officially moved in, and they were lucky enough to eventually find renters. In an act of resentment towards the families who spoke ill of them during the Watcher's heyday, Derek actually wrote letters to them himself, pretending to be the Watcher. His obsession with the mysterious stranger crept dangerously into his life. In 2019, the house finally sold to new owners, but the Brodus family took a $300,000 loss. However, it was well worth not needing to worry about the mysterious watcher anymore. The predominant theory remains that someone was trying to intimidate the Broduses, which isn't out of the realm of possibility. After all, other unsuspecting families had fallen victims to malicious neighbors. For one Pennsylvania household, it wasn't strange letters that terrified them. An unexpected creak in the night could scare even the steadiest of property owners, 
but they kept noticing something that sounded so out of the ordinary that they couldn't ignore it any longer. The Pittsburgh couple assumed that they were hearing some sort of house-related din while they slept, at least at first. But as the noise continued, they realized that it was something far more sinister and they had to act. So they installed a camera and when they played the footage back, they couldn't believe the terrifying image of their neighbor secretly spying on them. Before the frightening revelation, Jerome and Ashley Kennedy were just like any other couple in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. They lived with their 10-month-old daughter, Regan, in an historic home in the city. Meanwhile, 69-year-old Robert Havrila lived in the house next door. In a 2017 interview with Inside Edition, the mom and dad would describe him as very reclusive. But although the Kennedys also revealed their neighbor often kept to himself, the family would become very familiar with him in time, and in one of the worst ways imaginable. It all started in July 2017, when Jerome heard noises coming from the bedroom ceiling. Then things got even stranger. Jerome spotted a light coming through a pipe in the bedroom. I saw the light right through there, he told Inside Edition crew, as he pointed out the spot. He added that the light appeared to be searching for a place to look through. Making matters worse, Jerome shared the bedroom not only with his wife, but also with their daughter who slept in a crib nearby. So as he continued to see and hear strange things, the man of the house decided to take matters into his own hands and set up the camera. Even without video footage, though, Jerome was sure of what was going on. I knew someone was up there. As for their reason for being there, he told CBS Pittsburgh in 2017, the only thing I can assume is he's watching my baby, my wife, or myself. Then, just one day after Jerome had installed the camera, footage confirmed what the dad already knew to be true. Someone seemed to be watching them, snooping on his young family, and the person allegedly doing the peeping was the Kennedy's neighbor, Robert Havrila. Even creepier were the lengths that Havrila seemed to go in order to see the family's day-to-day -day actions. He's removed all the insulation from my ceiling above the bedroom, Jerome told CBS Pittsburgh, and that gives him direct access to where he could manipulate and get his way into the vents. Furthermore, Havrila's movement from his home into the Kennedy's was made easier by another renovation he'd made. According to Inside Edition, the neighbor had created a removable wall between the adjoining properties. Potentially, this could help him to enter the Kennedy's attic without any difficulty. And in the footage captured on Jerome's camera, Havrila had already made his entry, presumably through the wall he opened. He carried with him a drill and a light. The latter object was lightly unsurprising to Jerome since he'd previously seen a glow coming from his attic. Next, Havrila examined an area near a vent that hung just over Regan's crib and her parents' bed. He spent about 30 minutes simply gazing at the scene below before retreating to the property he owned next door. But even though he had possible proof in hand, Jerome's investigation into his neighbor didn't end there. And as it happens, the father also found holes drilled into a common wall between his house and Havrila's. Jerome plugged each one with tissue paper, however, to keep the view hidden from prying eyes. Upon finding these holes, and of course capturing the footage, the Kennedys called the authorities. Then, on July 17, 2017, Havrila was arrested. He was subsequently charged with stalking and trespassing. But that wasn't nearly the end of the family's ordeal. Less than a month after Havrila's arrest, he appeared in court with his lawyer, Anthony Jackson. There, the legal professional spoke for his client, telling CBS Pittsburgh, I think it will come out soon that Havrila did not have a malicious intent at all. Jackson added, I think it was an innocent situation that's getting drug out a little further than it should but that will come out soon. Unsurprisingly, though, the Kennedys do not see Havrila's actions in that light at all. And Jerome's wife, Ashley, fought back tears as she described to Inside Edition what it felt like to see her neighbor invading her privacy. We have no idea what's been going on inside our own home, she said. What's more, her husband seemed to be similarly upset about the situation. It's very disheartening to feel violated in this way that somebody can come in and disrupt the sanctity of my home he told CBS Pittsburgh. It's indescribable, he added. Even the family's attorney, Jack Goodrich, couldn't believe Havrila's audacity. It's scary to think somebody can be that intrusive in somebody's home. In my humble opinion, he was waiting for the creep show, he told Inside Edition. Now, however, the Kennedys just need to wait for justice to take its course. Perhaps few could blame them for hoping that their neighbor is punished, though at least then they might feel safe sleeping in their own home once again. Please share this with your friends and family.